So a quick and easy way to organize your thoughts about writing your book is to answer this question. What question does your book answer for the reader? Once you get clear on who your reader is and what is the question that they have in their mind that your book answers, it helps you so much decide which stories go in this book and which do not. You have your whole life experience to draw on. You probably have multiple books within you, but each book should serve just one ideal reader and should answer one question. Now there might be multiple uh, layers to the answer, but that will really help you see what belongs in your book and what doesn't belong in your book. The mistake a lot of first time writers make when they write their book is they attempt to uh, write their autobiography and share all of the stories of their life. And that will take you forever because you have a long life and you keep living it as you're writing. So you never get done. But the, the value of uh, framing your book as a question, it just helps really, really uh, uh, isolate which stories belong and which stories do not belong. You know, my background's in film and television. It's all in the editing. So you can take your, your stories, your life, your thoughts, your research, and you can edit them different ways. So here's some examples. Uh, my most recent book, Thought Leader Launch, uh, Seven Ways to Make Seven Figures with Your Million Dollar Message. It answers the question, what is a thought leader? How do thought leaders actually make money? Do they make money from their books or are books just a lead magnet? What's the difference between self-publishing and general publishing? Can you give me some examples of thought leaders who've been successful? And what are the seven models that have generated millions of dollars for many thought leaders? And how could I do it as well? So that's a lot of words, but basically it answers the question, you know, should you write a book? Yes, you should, especially if you become a media savvy author, speaker, entrepreneur, which is why it's got a microphone as well as a pen. So that's what, to me, the difference between an author and a thought leader is the thought leaders talking about their ideas. Okay, so that answers that question. Um, here is my first published book, From Heartbreak to Happiness, An Intimate Diary of Healing. It, it, it answers the question, you know, what is the process of grief actually feel like for the person experiencing it. So it's a diary of healing and it reveals, you know, me going from heartbreak to happiness and if I can do it, you can too. So it answers the question for the reader who wants to know if they should just shoot themselves now to get it over with or what is the process of grief? Uh, what is it like for a human being? Not, you know, five steps to this or seven steps to that. Uh, another book which I don't have on my shelf right now, um, Grief Relief in 30 Minutes answers the question, how? Like, how do I go from heartbreak to happiness? So it gives some coaching processes and tools that people can use to go from heartbreak to happiness. And it's called Grief Relief in 30 Minutes because most coaching sessions are less than 30 minutes or less. And there's many processes you can do in under half an hour that will provide relief from grief. This book, Encouraging Words, answers the question, uh, okay, I wanna give a gift to somebody who's heartbroken or grieving. Can I just give a little gift with inspiring and encouraging words? So it answers the question, what are some encouraging words I could give to somebody who's heartbroken? So this book is not hard to read. It's just little quotes every day. So here's one example from A Course in Miracles. Love holds no grievances. My grievances hide the light of the world in me. I am entitled to miracles. Let miracles replace all grievances. Or on the other side of the same page, 118, 119, Elizabeth Kula Ross said, live so that you don't look back and regret that you've wasted your life. Live honestly and fully. Live. Okay, so basically, you know, people were really liking my diary, but they thought maybe that was too raw to give somebody who was grieving. So that book answered that request. Uh, here's some other examples. Here's a book that I created for my clients, uh, doctors uh, Jennifer and Janice Stone, Seven Keys to a Healthy Smile After 40. So obviously it answers the question, how do I have a healthy smile after 40, right? And that was a, an ideal position for them because they wanted to attract more patients 
over 40 because they're dentists and patients over 40 invest a lot in their teeth and instead of just spending 100 bucks or so on a cleaning they can spend you know five to ten thousand dollars getting crowns and getting their their teeth all fixed up so that answers the question uh, and was strategic here's some books this one's not written by me Robert Cialdini wrote uh, uh, Influence, which is one of the most amazing books on marketing. Highly recommended it. I highly recommend it. Um, and it, that other book talks about ways of influence because he was tired of buying girl guy cookies that he didn't want because he was very easy to influence. This follow-up book, Persuasion, I really like as well, also by Robert Cialdini. And it basically answers the question, are there ways to per persuade or influence a buyer or tip a meeting before the meeting even starts? So persuasion. And that's what your book does. A book frames you as the authority, attracts your ideal client, repels people that don't uh, agree with what you are stand for. It's very effective at persuasion. So your book is a persuasion technique. And if you want to learn more, more about persuasion, check this book out. Here's some other uh, books you may have in your in your library: The Virgin Diet. So this book answers the question: How can I lose seven pounds in seven days? TED Talks. What are some good TED Talks? How do I give a TED Talk? That's the question there. So you can see that you know books ha answer a question and framing it that way, see the question that your book answers. The other thing I recommend that you do is create a vision board. Create a vision board, maybe mock up a, um, an example of your, what your book cover could look like, uh, decide on who your ideal reader is, choose an image to represent him or her, maybe you have a secondary reader as well, but put it on a, put it on a vision board and the, the, so that all you're writing is for that one person. That's the other mistake that people make is one, they don't decide what is the question their book is the answer to, and then they change their minds or don't make a choice or inconsistent about who is the reader. And therefore from day to day or week to week, their language changes from you know being friendly and, and open and something that uh, a grade eight could, could understand to being all academic with footnotes and very, you know, pompous on another day. So decide very clearly who your ideal reader is. And again, that will help you filter what belongs in your book and what does not. So for this book, My Diary of Healing from Heartbreak to Happiness, I decided that my filter was to just imagine that my best friend, uh, husband just died and that the only gift I could give her was this book because apparently I was gonna you know, die the next day. Um, and that this was something for my very best friend and I really wanted to console her and ease her journey. And so with that framing, it helped me decide to be authentic, decide to be vulnerable, decide to give it my all to do whatever I could, even if I looked bad with like, oh, tears and, and, uh, and um, I don't know, suicidal thoughts and depressed and and uh, self-loathing and all kinds of things, you know, because I was editing it for my best friend and the stakes were high because I imagined this hypothetical best friend's husband had just died and, and that uh, I was gonna be her light through this tunnel of darkness. So that's how I edited it. And then, you know, my background's in film and television. So movies are typically in five acts and there's five chapters here. And the end of each chapter is a turning point in my own process of grieving. So you, if you're, if you're um, uh, drawing from your own life experience to create your book, you don't have to do your entire autobiography from beginning to end, giving everything equal focus. Instead, you wanna filter it through what's the question that your book is the answer to, and then look for turning points in your own life. In this case, from Heartbreak to Happiness, I looked for turning points in grief, turning points where I made a quantum leap forward in clarity, or happiness or peace of mind, you know, life-changing dreams and things like that. And so, you know, whatever your book is about, if your book is about, you know, how to say yes to the universe, you know, what were your challenges along that path? When were the turning points where you leaned into saying yes and it went well or leaned into saying yes and it didn't go well, you know, share those turning points with us. Or if your book is answering the question, you know, what does it take 
to be fluid and flexible in your mind and in your body and to age gracefully and at 73 to be a belly dancer as a amazing Dionise is at 73 inspiring us all at our Mexico life design retreat recently so if, if that was the question you know how do I keep a supple mind and body then she could edit her life story using stories that show suppleness or lack thereof so that the reader gets wisdom about that I could imagine that that book might even be some of Dionysus own stories but then it might be a little bit like atomic habits you know it might really explore suppleness or fluidity or how moving your body she's a belly dancer impacts your life or how leaning into being an artist impacts your life but for now I'm just using suppleness imagine that having a supple body and a supple mind are keys to longevity and health I think I think when we have a stiff body and a closed mind we're pretty much on our way out, <laughs> pretty much on our way to death. <laughs> All right, so that's a really important way to fast track your book and to get clear on what belongs and what doesn't belong is to look at, number one, what is the question your book is the answer to? And number two, who is your ideal reader? And then filter it all through that. Look for turning points, look for quantum leaps, look for things that really matter, and um, then write every day. And you don't have to write in sequence. That's the other thing. You don't have to write in sequence. You can start anywhere. The order will change later anyway. So what's the question your book is the answer to? I'm Aurora Winter. Good luck writing your book. Bye for now.